What happens when an artist doesn't just represent the natural world, but makes it anew through a creative lens? Five alumni artists work with animals, plants, and environments, crafting them into personal expression and commenting on the human impulse to alter the world around us. The exhibition, curated by Leslie Wright, director of the museum, includes paintings, printmaking, sculpture, and drawings by artist Faye Stanford, Pamela Crockett, Aaron Rothman, Reagan Golden, and John Martin Bell. Hi, this is Aaron Rothman. I'm speaking from my studio in Phoenix, Arizona about the work that I have included in the show, Nature Made, at the Grinnell College Museum of Art. All of the pieces that I have in the show are from a group of images that I call the wildflowers. Uh, the basic idea of these works is pretty straightforward. Uh, they're all photographs of flowering plants, uh, primarily around the Phoenix metropolitan area. And I've taken these straight photos and digitally removed anything not in direct sunlight. Then I've gone in and filled these shadow areas with uh, bright, flat, decorative colors. The title Wildflowers is a little bit ironic. All of these images were photographed in places that are not natural, uh, mostly in places that are purposely cultivated to look natural, uh, gardens or areas of native plantings. Uh, there are also some images uh, that are photographed in places where nature has reasserted itself in human-dominated landscapes. One of the main things driving this work is the desire to explore the dissolving boundary or maybe the false boundary between the natural and the artificial. Before I get into the details of the pieces in the show, I'd first like to trace some of my background as an artist very briefly and talk about some of the developments that led to the creation of this work. Since this is a show at Grinnell, I think it makes sense to start during my time at Grinnell. Uh, I came to college not really expecting to go into art, but once I got there, that's really all I wanted to do. I could never get myself to start a paper before the night before it was due, but I would pretty much spend all my free time in the studio during my years at Grinnell. I had gotten into photography in high school, uh, but there was not a photo program at Grinnell when I was there, so instead I got really involved in drawing and printmaking. This etching is an example of the kind of stuff I was doing by the time I finished Grinnell. You can see that it is very much based in the landscape, but it's not trying to represent a particular place, but rather get a sense of a, a feeling of place, a feeling of landscape. This kind of abstract visual thinking and visual expression has really informed my work ever since then. After finishing Grinnell, I drifted back towards photography, but my approach to this medium was now really affected by my time doing printmaking and drawing. I was still very much interested in landscape, but I use photography not so much to picture places or depict them in a literal sense, but to try to get at an emotional or psychological experience of place. When I moved to Arizona to start grad school in photography at Arizona State University, the first thing that I was taken with was the quality of light. The summer light in the deserts, uh, like nothing else I'd quite experienced, it's much more of a obliterating force almost than an illuminating one. And so in this picture, early from my career in graduate school, was trying to communicate that sense of light by photographing this landscape in a very frontally lit manner and then printing it super light and blown out in the dark room. I was trying to get that sense of the presence of the desert light as a kind of phenomenon and as a kind of object in itself. In the years following graduate school, I moved into color photography and away from obvious darkroom manipulation. I also started looking more at the built environment as well as keeping my camera trained on the natural world. That flattening, obliterating quality of the desert light remained at the heart of the work though. 
I really kind of dread the summers here in Phoenix. The heat is pretty unbearable, but when the summer light comes, I just really want to break out my camera still. There's nothing quite like it. I work some time with relatively unmanipulated color photography, but after a while, about 10 years ago, I started to feel like this wasn't really able to express my experience of the world, particularly my experience of the natural world. There was this invisible specter of climate change coloring my experience, a kind of confusion as to what the idea of the natural world even meant. And my experience of the physical world and natural world was also more and more being shadowed by this new virtual realm. I'm not a big early tech adopter and I'm a bit of a tech skeptic, but I felt like the best way to explore these ideas was to dive into digital manipulation of my images. So that's what I did. I've worked with different ways of doing this. Uh, the approach I want to talk about today that relates to the work in the show uh, begins with this photograph here. I had been photographing the desert for a long time and this way to bring out that kind of flattening quality of the light. This meant uh, shooting things frontally lit to minimize shadows. So at some point I was playing around on the computer and I decided if I'm minimizing the shadows through my choice of vantage point, why don't I just digitally remove them? The simple gesture of removing the shadows did something really interesting to the visual space of the image that spoke to that quality of light, but it also made the image occupy a really interesting, ambiguous zone between natural and artificial that I was fascinated by. The next thing I did in some different images was to replace the shadows with a really bright color and a kind of artificial brightness to counter the brightness of the sun. In the process of working on these, I'd be zoomed way in on the image on the computer, trying to get the shadows out as best I could. I became really fascinated with how these little bits of foliage and little flowers in these pictures looked against the flat fields of color. The visual similarity with pattern design struck me right away. Uh, wallpapers or floral fabrics. I've always had a soft spot for this kind of thing uh, and even though I didn't go into this work with that intention I decided to pursue that. So I went out and rephotographed some flowers and bloom in as I said before these spaces that kind of were in between natural and artificial these purposefully cultivated places or places where nature had kind of reasserted itself. I began replacing the shadows of these images with these really pretty decorative colors, lavenders and pinks and butter yellows. The result's kind of a messed up wallpaper, I think. I want there to be a tension in this work between the prettiness and the chaos, between humans' desire to control nature and our inability to do so. As I worked on these images, I researched the history of pattern design, particularly textile design. I think the use of natural motifs in pattern design and textile design and other decorative arts is an underappreciated lens through which we viewed the landscape and our relationship to the landscape. The history of this is uh, it's really fascinating and it connects into uh, globalized industrialization and colonialism and this kind of ethos of resource extraction that has driven the modern capitalist economy. On the other hand, there is the real genuine beauty in a lot of floral patterns and natural motifs that I think speaks to a real genuine desire to connect to the natural world, but of course in a controlled kind of way. We're at a point in human history where we have affected literally everything in the natural world, to the point where I don't even know what the term natural world means anymore. But we certainly don't control it. I'm speaking now uh, during the COVID-19 outbreak, which I think is a perfect example of how we do not control nature, how nature still has the run of us. I try to keep all my work open-ended and in these wildflower images I don't have a particular statement that I want to make. 
I want them to be a space for reflecting on our current relationship with the natural world, whatever that may be. I want them to express the tensions inherent to Western society's place within the planet's ecosystem. But I also want them to express the beauty and the necessity of our desire to connect with the natural world around us. Whether we admit it or not, we are part of nature and are dependent on it.